First, we'll review the tapered roller bearing. The TRB bearing is often called a tapered set or bearing set. This is because it's made of two main components, the cone and the cup or race. The cone is comprised of the inner race, ring, tapered rollers, and a cage. The cup is the outer ring. The advantage of the tapered design is that the tapered rollers have a positive alignment with the shaft. That is, each roller will align itself perfectly on the tapered faces of the cup and cone. Tapered roller bearings can be found in both the front and rear wheels of many vehicles and in utility trailers. They are also used in the rear wheel axles of both the semi and full floating axles. In most of these applications, you will also see a separate seal is used to retain the grease or oil. New seals should be used when performing any of these services. We'll start with bearing and seal removal for front wheel tapered bearing sets. First, follow the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure to remove the tire and wheel. Using cap removal pliers or a screwdriver, remove the dust cover, cotter pin, and nut lock. Then loosen the adjusting nut. Pull the rotor or drum assembly toward you to loosen the washer and the outer wheel bearing. Tip. On vehicles equipped with disc brakes, remove and hang the caliper out of the way using a wire hanger. Do not support the caliper by letting it hang by the brake hose. Next, remove the adjusting nut, washer, and outer wheel bearing cone. Pull the rotor or drum assembly straight off the spindle. The inner bearing cup and seal will come off with it. Do not let the inner bearing or seal drag on the spindle thread. With seal side up, lay the rotor or drum on the workbench. Use a seal puller to remove the seal. Discard the old seal. Remove the cone and inspect. If reusing the drum or rotor but replacing the bearings, use a cup removal tool to drive out the cups. Tip: Never reuse old or used seals. Contamination entering past an old or used seal will ruin a bearing. Next, we'll review the proper procedures for cleaning and inspecting tapered bearing sets. First, using a clean solvent and a clean dry cloth, remove oil, grease, and dirt from the hub cavity, dust cover, and spindle. Next, rinse the bearing cones in a clean solvent. Dry them thoroughly. Natural air drying is the safest method to use. Compressed air may be used to blow out the bearings, but only after all dirt has been removed. Then, inspect the cleaned bearing cones thoroughly for nicks, pitted areas, and damage. If any of these are present, discard the entire bearing and replace it with a new one. Next, inspect the cleaned bearing cups in the rotor or drum thoroughly for nicks, pitted areas, and damage. If any of these are present, discard the entire bearing and replace it with a new one. Tip: Never install a new bearing cone with a used bearing cup or vice versa. If you determine during the inspection process a new bearing set is needed, remember to drive the used bearing cup out of the rotor or drum hub. If you are using a new rotor or drum, it is best practice to replace the bearing cup. Finally, inspect the spindle for burrs, nicks, embedded particles, scoring, bending, thread, or other damage. Carefully smooth out any roughness with an emery cloth. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's recommendation for acceptable spindle wear. Now that we've successfully removed the bearing and seal and have gone through the proper cleaning and inspecting process, let's review proper bearing and seal installation. First, pack the bearings with new wheel bearing grease by using a bearing packer. The packer will push the new grease through the cage and rollers. Make sure the new grease coats all surfaces of the bearing. Tip: TRBs should always be packed with new high-quality wheel bearing grease. Next, place the inner side of the drum or rotor face up. If you are replacing the bearing cup, use a bearing race driver to drive the new cup into the hub until it is firmly seated against the hub shoulder. Repeat the process on the opposite side for the outer cup if that bearing is being replaced. Tip: Always use a bearing race driver to install bearing cups. Be careful not to damage the cup surfaces. Never use a cone to drive a cup. Coat the hub cavity with wheel bearing grease to the depth of the bearing cup's smallest diameter. 
Apply a light coat of wheel bearing grease to the spindle. Place the inner bearing in the hub. Lightly coat the lip of the new seal with wheel bearing grease. Then, slide the new seal onto the seal installation tool. The seal should fit over the tool's adapter, and the sealing lip should point toward the bearing. Now, position the seal so it starts squarely in the hub without cocking. Tap the tool until the seal bottoms out. When the sound of the striking mallet changes, the seal will be fully seated in the hub. Tip. Always use a seal driver to install a seal. Never hammer directly on the seal. Be careful not to cock the seal. Either action could damage the seal and lead to premature failure. Carefully lift and push the rotor or drum assembly onto the spindle. Keep it centered so the seal is not touched or damaged by the spindle threads. Push it back until the seal is seated on the spindle seal surface. Install the outer bearing cone, washer, and adjusting nut in that order. Next, rotate the wheel to be sure the hub or drum turns smoothly and the brakes are not dragging. Dragging brakes will cause a false adjustment. Adjust the wheel bearing according to the manufacturer's recommended procedure. If the vehicle is older and the information is not readily available, follow these guidelines. While rotating the wheel, tighten the adjusting nut until there is a slight bind and all bearing surfaces are in contact. Then, back off the adjusting nut 1 16th to 1 8th of a turn, or to the nearest locking hole, or enough so that the wheel rotates freely with 1 1,000th to 7 thousandths of an inch end play. Check the bearing adjustment by using a dial indicator to measure the end play. Mount the dial indicator base as close to the center of the rotor or drum hub as possible, with its line of action approximately parallel to the axis of the spindle. With the dial indicator plunger or pointer against the end of the spindle, set the indicator gauge at zero. Grasp the rotor or drum at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions. With equal pressure on both hands, push the rotor or drum straight in and read the dial indicator. Then, with equal pressure on both hands, pull the rotor or drum out and read the dial indicator again. The bearing end play is equal to the total dial indicator movement. A spring scale may also be needed depending on the application. When the bearing is adjusted properly, insert and bend the new cotter pin, replace the dust cover, and reinstall all remaining components per the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure. Follow the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure to replace the tire and wheel. To close out this section of the training, let's review some general items on front wheel tapered roller bearing starting with general service information. The general bearing preload setting is 1,000th to 7,000th of an inch. A grease pack will last approximately 30,000 to 50,000 miles. Tapered roller bearings are often reused. Seals should never be reused. Only use high quality wheel bearing grease. Do not mix old and new parts. Now we'll review common causes of tapered roller bearing failure. Improper preload. Improper grease or oil. Insufficient grease. Contamination. Mix of old and new parts. Use of low quality or value grade parts.